Hello everybody, Steve Plitty, NJ Events Media with Keith Sargent here. A Rutgers victory! We're fresh. Cartoon. 44-34 over the Liberty Flames. Uh, you know, hey, this team's been through a lot. The players are not the ones responsible for what happened here. For them to have an opportunity to celebrate, to, to be excited in the locker room, you know, to, to what it, I, I, it was a long overdue and I was happy for them. They, they deserved this. They played really well. A smart game. Liberty wasn't good. Uh, but, you know, offensively, Johnny Langan, you just saw a lot of things you haven't seen all year. Everything. I mean, uh, Nunzio uh, Campanelli getting a Gatorade bath it probably hasn't ha happened since his Bergen Cat. That really stage. happened? Wow, yeah, I missed that one. Okay. Um, and, you know, you talk, we talked to Mike Taverno after the game. And obviously, you know, he's a legacy guy. Yeah. He remembers his brother. He was a little kid when watching his brother have all those years. He hasn't had that uh, success yet. So just to be able for them to get, finally get you know off the schneid and be able to win a game, you feel good for him. And the one thing Tverdov did, a little of this, he coming did. to SHI he, he uh, Stadium. Uh, we asked him about it, about the chop, of course. If you're just joining us now, that was Greg Chiano's big thing when he was head coach here. He said he did it last year. It really wasn't a planned thing. It was just an impromptu celebration. But, I mean, a lot of fans loved it. Uh, you know, overall, though, the, the, his defense played well. They did not play well in the first half, but after that, you saw a couple of big plays. They stopped them uh, in a couple of key situations. Okay effort. Some anxious moments. The, the big yeah. play, obviously, was the laying in to, to uh, Isaiah Washington. Right. Isaiah Washington, a freshman, he's going to be really good, I think. And that, when you look at, you know, some of the uh, positives overall, Nunzio Campanelli pointed out after the game, uh, Isaiah Pacheco has over 100 yards. He's a sophomore. Uh, Isaiah Washington, freshman. You know, right. you, uh, Bo Melton had a, good, a big day receiving. He's a junior. He had more eligibility left. Right. On and on. And, uh, you know, Davon Robinson had a catch. Yeah. You're seeing guys who are younger who will be in a program for a few years. Maybe you can build on it. Right. And, the, and I, I wrote this, and I like the fact that this team really had every opportunity to quit. Yeah. And it did not. And I think a guy like Johnny Lankin, you know, put into a, a tough situation where you're coming in, you're, you know, taking over, you know, you, you, new play caller, new, trying to learn the fly, not a lot of playmakers around you. I mean, he was just carrying guys around the field. He 100 yards first time since 1961. Showed some good accuracy on third down, too. I know guys were wide, were wide open a lot of times. But still, that's something we haven't seen from him. Uh, it was an encouraging performance from him. We're always talking about the blowouts, right? The Rutgers blowouts and, like, thumbing through the media guy at, po at, at various <laughs> points saying, you know, you know, when was the last time they lost by this much? Yeah. At this, you know, in midway through the first quarter, or maybe late in the first quarter, where you saw that Langan was having that big day, I was thumbing through to see – who was the last Rutgers quarterback to have over 100 yards? Sam Moody, who I've actually interviewed in the past, not so uh, you know distant past. You know, he was the last one, 1961. You're gonna say I was there. When you're dying to say, and you covered that. You covered that game, right? Yeah, <laughs> Lehigh, yeah, easy one. Um, yeah, it was a. And we did thumb through the media guide on the on the sour note, looking for a crowd as small as this one. Again, it was 26,000 announced yep. against Minnesota, down to 23,000. It wasn't. It wasn't half that. Uh, I think, you know, the fan base has kind of given up on the season. I understand why. Uh, but, you know, at least the people who did come had one, you know, if they stayed to the end, they saw something happy for a change. Yeah, and again, we know what's coming. Coming, You know, <laughs> they're 2-6 and six now. Now, now, Illinois, winnable game, I guess, on the road. I, they'll be a two-digit uh, two underdog. But at least I wouldn't be stunned if they won the game. Um, then Ohio State, and then you know Penn State yes. and, and uh, Michigan State as a juggernaut. It's going to be a tough slog in the way, and at that point we'll be focused on the coaching search. Stay tuned for some details about that. Signing off, we miss you, Cratch. Not really. Steve Politi, Keith Sargent, thanks for watching.